Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about adaptive clinical monitoring and clinical trials. More after the break. A modern possibility to monitor a study is risk-based monitoring. The US FDA Food and Drug Administration has issued a guideline called Oversight of Clinical Investigations, a risk-based approach to monitoring. The EMA, European Medicines Agency, has published a similar reflection paper on risk-based study management. This is a modern way to adapt monitoring activities for CRA to the risk involved in a study risk without compromising data quality and compliance with patient rights and safety. In low-risk product development, for example, it is possible to switch more to central remote monitoring, which saves costs and resources indirectly. However, it's not about corporate risks such as excessive costs and delayed approval, but about quality risk management, i. risks related to patient safety and rights and or the quality and integrity of data. No matter how a study is monitored, patient safety is always the most important. Here you can see, for example, how risk-based, adaptive clinical monitoring can be implemented in practice. You measure the number of predefined risk factors that could have an impact on the quality of the study. The so-called key risk factors or key risk indicators. In this example, these are major protocol deviations, obtaining of the informed consent form in compliance with the ICHGCP and the 24-hour deadline for SAE reports. If no violations are measured, the lamps light up green. If the risk increases slightly, violations are measured because there are some major protocol deviations, because SAE are reported late, or because a patient's informed consent form has not been filled out correctly, the lamps would turn yellow, and if these cases occur so frequently that there is a risk for the entire study because data quality, patient safety, or rights are not guaranteed, a red lamp would indicate a high risk. The first column represents recruitment. Although it is red almost everywhere here because it is not going as good as expected, this does not mean a risk for the study quality, but for the adherence to timelines, which is why this factor is not taken as a key risk factor. In our example, this means that Site 3, for example, has a red light in all three key risk factors and should therefore be visited more often than usual than sites that have fewer or no red lights in the key risk factors. This can save costs because the sites with fewer measured key risk factors have to be visited significantly less often. Monitors should therefore adapt their visit frequency according to the development of the key risk factors. In summary, sites with a higher risk for the study due to more frequent violations require frequent monitoring. Visits to sites with a lower risk can be reduced to a minimum and a lot of data can be checked by remote monitoring. Such sites can only be randomly visited to perform source data verification. This can save a lot of resources. This sounds logical, but it requires a certain systematic approach, which includes both an understanding of risk management and technical implementation. Since these prerequisites are not yet in place among the broad mass of CRO and sponsors, monitoring is still very often done on a scattergun basis. This means that all sites are monitored equally frequently, which means that sites with a higher risk are visited too seldom and sites with a lower risk are visited too often. Thus, the resources are used inefficiently for monitoring. So much about adaptive clinical monitoring in clinical trials. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. Goodbye.